Hey everybody, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography and today we are going to set up a NAS on a 10 gigabit network. Now, why do you care and why should you watch this video? Well, in our previous advanced photo storage videos, we set up a NAS on a gigabit network. And what that was really useful for is backing up your images, backing up your video to a more archive based NAS. This video is gonna be more focused on actually editing video off of a NAS and what you need in order to do that. Uh, one of our employees, Jeff McLean, you guys have seen him on the channel, he wants to take these years and years and years of prof professional photo and video footage and condense these like 20 odd hard drives into one box. And so that's gonna be the goal. The difference is though that Jeff wants to be able to edit video and photo off of the NAS in real time, including 4K video if that, need, if that happens down the line. So that's really our goal here. And that's why a 10 gigabit network is super important. All right, so why is this a difficult thing and why do we need to make a video on it? Well, the problem is that most home networks are gigabit. If you think about the video we made before, and you guys should watch that as a good prerequisite for this video, but if you think about the video we made before, your router at home is a gigabit router, meaning there are ethernet ports on the back, but they only operate at gigabit speeds. The problem with gigabit is it's great for backing stuff up. It's about the speed of a standard plug-in external hard drive. But if you start to edit 4K video off of it, you're gonna be bottlenecked by the connection speed. So if we wanna add a 10 gigabit NAS into the system, we'll need a few things. All right, so what do we need in order to make this happen? Well, it's fairly simple. All we're gonna need is, first of all, a NAS that is capable of handling 10 gigabit speeds. This right here, and again, I've linked all these products in the description, this is the DS1618+. Plus. It doesn't have 10 gigabit built in, but it has an expansion card that we can actually add 10 gigabit capabilities. So this little thing right here is just like a computer card that we plug into this NAS, and that will allow it to operate at 10 gigabit speeds. Another thing that we're gonna need is a switch. Now a switch in the world of networking is basically just a bridge between different devices. And if you think about it, all we really need is the computer connecting to the NAS to be 10 gig. Whatever happens on the rest of the network, we don't really care so long as the computer and NAS have a fast connection between the two of them. This right here, which I've linked in the description, is a 10 gigabit capable switch. And basically we're gonna plug the NAS into one of the ports, the computer into the other port, and it's gonna allow the two to connect with one another. Now the problem is you're also gonna to wanna to make sure your computer is connected to your router at home so that you can still continue to like get internet and browse the web and do those things. So this port right here will actually be run to Jeff's router so that everything communicates on the same network. Now, the communication between this port and the router is not 10 gig, but we don't care because the computer and the NAS are gonna be able to 10 gig with one another without any problems. The only other thing you're gonna need is a way to connect your computer to that 10 gigabit switch. And that's something that not a lot of computers have built in. Luckily, it's becoming more common, which is super awesome. But if you don't have one, it's really easy to add that feature on. Assuming you have Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3, you can get an adapter like this. Now this is actually a fairly expensive version. They have come down in price quite a bit, uh, but this is made by a company called Sonnet Technology. And basically what it does is it gives you a couple 10 gigabit ports from a Thunderbolt port. So you just use the Thunderbolt port on your computer plug it into this, and then this converts that Thunderbolt into a 10 gig signal that you can connect to your switch. So basically the computer runs into this, this runs into the switch, and then the switch runs into the NAS. And that's how the two communicate with one another at that high speed. One thing I should also say is defining how fast 10 gigabit is. Now, remember this is a theoretical speed, so this is assuming that everything else is as perfect as possible, but theoretically 10 gigabit is actually 1250 megabytes per second, which if you think about it, most SSDs that you plug in, like one of these uh, Samsung T5 drives right here, these are usually about 600 megabytes per second. So a 10 gigabit connection in optimal conditions is gonna be about twice as fast as one of these SSDs, and that's pretty darn awesome. Now, granted it's bigger, but if you edit at home, this can be a really great option to get a huge amount of storage at a speed that's almost double these plug-in SSDs. Again, that's theoretical. It's gonna come down to how fast the drives are you put into this thing. It's gonna come down to how you configure it, but the speed in the connection is there to handle however we configure things. All right, so now that we know what's involved, let's go ahead and talk about the plan. What we need to do first is take this network card and insert it into the NAS to basically give our NAS 10 gigabit capability. 
From there, we're gonna get the computer hooked up to our 10 gig adapter, make sure that that's connecting okay, and then we'll bring our NAS into the picture. The other thing we're gonna need to do is load up the NAS and configure it. I'm not gonna go through that process in detail in this video because I did in our previous photo storage video. So if you guys are interested in that, you can check it out down in the description. I'll link it down there. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll check back in once we've got things kind of a little bit more configured. All right, so what we've done so far is taken the 10 gigabit card and installed it right here in the back of the NAS. And again, that's about a $100 add-on for this specific NAS. And it just gives this 10 gigabit capability. Super simple, it plug, plugs in, takes like two minutes to do that. And then we've actually added four six terabyte drives to the front of this, which is gonna give us uh, about three times six in capacity. So around 18, 20 terabytes, something like that, um, which should be plenty should be pretty awesome. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to get the NAS put back where it's going to go. We're going to power it up and we're going to get everything else interconnected. And then I'll check back in with you guys at that point. All right. So what we've just done is gotten the switch connected to the router and the switch connected to the computer. And I just want to run over that real quick. So I've got the switch right here. And just like I explained before, um, the ethernet port right here is going directly down to Jeff's router. And that's just so that this switch connects to the internet because his router downstairs is what provides internet to the whole house. And we want anything that's plugged into this to also have access to that internet. So that's where that goes. This cable right here is what's called a direct attach cable and it's an SFP plus cable. They look like this. So kind of a weird connector type, but this is what's going from this switch into, put this away, into this black box that I showed earlier. And that black box is converting the signal from SFP into Thunderbolt, which Jeff's computer can recognize. Now, all we had to do to get all this working was plug it in, easy, right? And then all we had to do was go in, download the drivers for that SFP plus to Thunderbolt converter. Again, I left a link in the description. Sonnet Technologies offers really good drivers. You download and you install those. Once the driver is installed, we need to tell the computer to prioritize the connection from the SFP plus instead of the connection from Wi-Fi. Because if you think about it, we could connect to Jeff's network via Wi-Fi and he could actually access the NAS through Wi-Fi. Um, the NAS is becoming part of his network. The problem is that's gonna limit us to Wi-Fi speeds, which is like Peasantville compared to what 10 gig can do. So what we wanna do is go into our system preferences and we need to go to network right here and inside of network, and this is on a Mac PC, it's a little bit different, but what we wanna do is for one thing, make sure that Thunderbolt one is above Wi-Fi. That's gonna prioritize that connection over Wi-Fi. I'm actually gonna go one further though and turn off Jeff's Wi-Fi. Because this is an iMac, it's gonna be here all the time. There's not really any reason for us to prioritize Wi-Fi over the plugged in connection since it's all gonna stay still. But if you were on a laptop, you might wanna leave your Wi-Fi on for when you're not home. And in that case, just make your Thunderbolt connection higher than the Wi-Fi connection and it will prioritize that. On Windows, it's a little bit different, but the same thing is possible. What we're gonna do next is take the NAS and get the NAS connected to the switch as well. Make sure everything that is working, we're actually gonna tuck it all back where it's gonna go. Uh, but just so you guys can see it, right? We've got the switch plugged in here. This goes to the router, this goes to the uh, computer, and then we're gonna use one other one of these ports to connect to the switch. We're gonna get everything all kind of cable managed and then take a look at what we've done. All right, we've completed it. So we tucked all the stuff back behind the computer out of sight, which is awesome. Um, just like in the last video, we had to go in and create a new volume, choose the different shared folders that we wanted to use. Again, that's all in the previous video, so you guys should check it out there. Uh, but we did all that configuration stuff, and now it's basically just up to Jeff to copy the years and years and years worth of hard drives over to his new NAS 
um, to have everything saved there. So just a quick recap. What we decided to do, again, we had four six terabyte drives inside of this NAS. Uh, we configured it with SHR, and SHR means that one of those drives can die completely dead, and Jeff won't lose any information. Everything will be saved uh, with one drive failure, which is really awesome because it basically means that you have an instant backup as soon as you put something on that NAS. It's saved and it's backed up. Um, so that's really awesome. The thing that I always like to do whenever I complete something like this is run a speed test. There's a really good program that I'll link down in the description called LAN or Local Area Network Speed Test. And it's a good thing when you run a 10 gig network to just run that because sometimes things aren't configured right and you don't actually get 10 gigs out of the, out of the speed. Now, again, 10 gig is a theoretical limit. So I wanted to give you guys some real world numbers so that you could kind of understand what to expect with this setup. First of all, if we were connecting this via gigabit, gigabit is about one gigabit per second, but you need to convert that into gigabytes per second to really understand it. So we have to divide everything by eight. Basically, if you do the math, a gigabit is about 125 megabytes per second. And megabytes per second, I think is a good, um, benchmark that most people can understand. So gigabit equals about 125, 150 megabytes per second. Jeff's right here is tested with an actual speed of 540 megabytes per second. So we're getting at least three times the speed off of this versus if it was connected via gigabit, which again, one of those little Samsung T5s, those are about 500 megabytes per second. So we're a hair faster than a Samsung T5 and we have like 20 terabytes worth of storage, which is pretty darn awesome. Oh, and also the storage is redundant, which is also pretty awesome. So hopefully I've made my sales pitch enough. Synology doesn't pay me. These companies don't pay me. I just think these things are super awesome. So that's the run through. That's how you set up a 10 gigabit network. Again, links are in the description for all the products we used. Now it's just Jeff's turn to get everything moved over and backed up and safe, which should be awesome. All right, you guys, thank you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have a question, comment, leave it down in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe down there or up there to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you have good luck setting one of these up if that's what you decide to do for your photos and video.